Hell yes. Hey, by the way, uh, I, I completely forgot because you were talking about the systems and uh, decision trees and the illusion of choice made me think of Sam Harris and I forgot uh, to mention it. So he talks about free will quite a bit. Huh. And that there's an illusion of free will. So it's, it's like- bold the, claim, Cotton. <laughs> is that, uh, you know, maybe the universe constructed that little game where it makes us feel like we have a bunch of choices, but we really don't. We're really always ending up with a middle finger. That would be hilarious. Yeah, that's it. That's that's what you see before you die. It's just yeah. a giant middle <laughs> finger. It's like, oh, fuck. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. What do you think? Do you think there's a free will? Like, we feel like we're making choices. So you're thinking, again, what we're talking about, okay, here's a system of martial arts that's uh, hands of grace. There's different schools and whatever. And then you're thinking, okay, how can I think outside these systems? But then there's a, also a system that's our human society. And we feel like there's an actual choice being made by us individuals. Do you think that choice is real? Or is it just an illusion? Well, I, okay, that's a really good question. I'm not necessarily equipped to answer this, but I'll do my best. Um, yeah. Okay, I guess I would say to start with, Sure, would be interesting if it wasn't real. If the choice wasn't real, yeah, um, would be pretty interesting if it is real. Uh, first off, I would start with uh, facilitative beliefs versus not facilitative beliefs. It's almost like uh, I think the world's out to get me. True, not true. What next? Mm -hmm. Probably not a facilitative belief. Even if you, if imagine you believe there's no free will. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what? Does that justify every single impulse that you're going to give into? Or does the belief in free will, does the belief in my ability to work hard, to focus, to be disciplined, to improve my position, improve my situation, whether it's true or not, although I think that at least many of us would argue that at least whether whether there's some sort of internal driver that allows for that. Yeah. Like you, we live in a material world, your actions do affect the world. Uh, I can choose to pick that water up or not. Um, and anyway, uh, I would say I believe strongly in the idea of picking facilitative beliefs, um, you know, and going, hey, I will adjust whether this belief system is right or wrong on a cosmic level. I'm nowhere near smart enough to understand, but I can say me deciding that, let's say, for instance, I'm going to walk over to have a conversation with someone in the hotel lobby and they've, I've never met them. And I go over and I start with, huh, this is going to be interesting. And I just walk over there versus in my head, I'm like, what's this asshole want? We're about to have two very different conversations. I could be right that this person's not very polite or, is, or or thinks negatively of me right from go, but I think that that's probably not a facilitative belief. People talk about, I'm, how is that going to help me navigate the conversation to a positive conclusion? And I think about that for, uh, um, you know, let's say fighting, it's a good example, like confidence. People, plenty of people believe plenty of things that aren't real, <laughs> myself included, I'm sure, uh, all the time. And uh, anyway believing that you can do something i'm like hey i think i can win doesn't guarantee you a positive outcome but i would say it, it most of us would probably it helps. It, most of us would argue that it helps um, and you're think thinking about depression believing. what's depression if if not a a negative unfacilitated belief that is not always that oftentimes is not reflected by reality mm -hmm. but you project it onto reality and it's understandable if it makes you feel like oh man this isn't going to work out i don't think the prospects are going well and then if you feel like you can't get out of that loop that seems pretty rough. And I, I see a lot of things out in society right now where you go, whether whether you agree or disagree with various positions on things, you go, is that a facilitated belief? Even if that is yeah. true, which is arguable, anything. So what next, man? So what? where does this end? When, when is the positive, what's the happy ending here? And if they go, yeah. well, there is no happy ending. I'm like, okay, so, so now what? So what do we do here? And I, I guess- uh, So choose um, the facilitated belief. And uh, in your intuition, believing that free will is real, is uh is more productive for a successful life absolutely because otherwise how am i not how how am i first of how can i how can society function if it's not real so how can i blame you or anyone else or hold anyone responsible for anything if free will isn't real well no that's exactly the point uh, you but at the surface level what you're saying is true but perhaps if we truly internalize that free will is an illusion we'll start to figure out something that uh, that transforms the way we see society. For example, we are very individual centric. So uh, believing that free will is real puts a lot of responsibility and blame on people when they 
do something bad. Mm. Maybe if we truly internalize that free will is an illusion, we start to think about the system of humans together as um, as like this mechanism for progress, as opposed to where individual people are responsible for their actions, uh, good or bad. So we like remove the value, the weight we assign to the accomplishments or the uh, or the violence, the negative stuff done by individuals and more look at the progress of society. I don't know what that looks like, but it's almost like, as opposed to focusing on the individual ants of an ant colony, looking at the entirety of the ant colony. It, that I So that, I think it makes perfect sense. I would just say that that's a reasonable thing to suggest. It's a seismic shift, right? And it's hard to say whether that would be, you know, better or worse, but I guess I'll use this as a, this is a convenient one for me. Um, so I remember the last time we spoke, I brought up, you know, one of the most reviled evil characters in certainly recent history, probably human history period, Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a big fan of making people live in the world that they want to believe in. Mm -hmm. Well, if free will doesn't exist and it's just about how things move forward, when are we going to be high-fiving this guy or what? Like this is, you know, because yeah. I remember what I said and, you know, that actually brings me to something else we discussed, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, people, like, for people who don't know, Ryan brought up, or I brought up, there's literally a giant book about Hitler in my, so I've been obsessed with uh, Hitler, World War II and Stalin recently, uh, for recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this has become like a meme. Joe Rogan with like DMT and, and me with Hitler. Can I pick something <laughs> more positive? A cat in the hat or something? I don't know. But we, you brought up Hitler as an example of something particular, of the, the, some philosophical discussions we're having. And uh, the excellent, eloquent, and uh, the, the full of integrity MMA journalist uh, clipped out something you've said about about Hitler and said that, uh, you know, I, I, I forget what the headlines are, but there were the, the, the most ridiculous possible implementation. Of Basically, what they nitwits done. intentionally misrepresent, intentionally misunderstanding what I'm saying. Then it's like, I get that they're stupid, but yeah. I'm stupid too. So I know what that's like. So I don't have stupid, a lot of sympathy. No stupid. For you. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, an, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't, I can't give you a pass on that. But basically, intentionally misunderstanding what's going on. But what I find funny is that hey, we got to be careful what we believe. And again, back to the cancel culture thing that we discussed last time as well, where would I would I like to apologize? I mean, no, actually something about cancel culture that we've been seeing things culturally, I'm like, I will be damned if I apologize for anything that I don't need to apologize for because I was intentionally misunderstood in that instance. Now, yeah. you could say that I don't, that I'm not a, uh, historical scholar, which I would agree immediately. And also that I'm, that I oftentimes ineloquently or inarticulately phrase things, which I'll agree that what as again, but, uh, ultimately, you know, going, Hey, I want to make you believe, live in the world that you will, that you're suggesting ought to exist. Okay. So if there's no free will is everything, how, how far of a step back are we willing to take cosmically before we start going Hey, this is good because we're experiencing a social, you know, a re a reckoning in our country at the moment, you know, for good and for, and for other, um, probably, I guess. And basically, uh, but hey, it all worked out, right? So that that's probably not something that would fly. And and I think well, that that's would, a fair thing. That's interesting. I, it, it might not fly from the individual perspective, but if you zoom out and think of, you know, appreciate society as you know, just like an ant colony as a beautifully complex system. Like we kind of, from from the individual pro, uh, perspective, we value progress, especially progress of the individual, but in whole progress of societies. But if you accept that this is just a complex system that's not necessarily headed any, anywhere, that this is almost like that river is just flowing, I think that removes the burden of always striving, of always trying, of always like the struggle and so on. So it's possible that if we have no control, you can like arrive at some kind of other Zen state. Does that sound very human though? That's, 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 that goes against, I think, uh, our current uh, human condition as we experience it, but we've communicated that to each other. Like, so we've, we've taught like through these social forces, taught each other that our lives matter and so on. Maybe if we, convince ourselves that we're just sort of like little things in a stream 
and ultimately none of it matters, there might be some kind of enjoyment to be discovered through that process. I don't, listen, I know I'm that, a yeah. capitalist, rah, rah, like. <laughs> but I guess I think you're bringing up a really important point. Like, I guess almost anything like capitalism, I, I only get to experience it as I, as I sit here now and I get to live, I was raised in the United States, have traveled around the world a little bit, have had the you know good fortune of meeting many people from many different places. And uh, I'm an end user of capitalism. I don't really know how it got here, whether it was, yeah. I wasn't there at the start of this idea. I wasn't there for, hey, how did we come up with this idea? How do we arrive? And I'm nowhere near well read enough to, to understand any of that really, uh, even secondhand. And I guess recognizing that communism, Marxism, socialism, anarchism, anything is, uh, these are all the perspectives that all have, I guess, various strengths and weaknesses. But I guess uh, one thing I'm always, I guess I would say the burden, it seems to me that if you want to make a change, uh, the burden of proof is is on the person implying that there needs to be a change. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that that there's nothing there, but it's like if you want to create a small shift, a ripple, that's fine, but a seismic ripping shift in how we exist or how we experience the world as human beings. And you mentioned fighting, why watching someone undergo, a, a take abuse on a level in the ring that's just shocking and then triumph in spite of it is like it's you're like this is unbelievable this is part of the magic of combat sports now it's part of the the magic the other side of the magic that doesn't get talked about sometimes is that the the, the trajectory of that individual's life later on is is not always great um or there's let me phrase there's a cost for that but uh you know if if this if the, we remember you mentioned removing the struggle i don't personally the struggle is is what makes life is what makes life life. And also, I guess, you know, something for us has brought up to me on a number of occasions is that as, he, and it makes sense to me, it, it's basically a uh, humans only understand things uh, through relative comparison. I only understand, um, you know, heat because I've known cold. I only understand, it's, I guess like, it's like talking to someone that's uh, never experienced any sort of hardship and then their, their latte isn't right. And then they, they pitch a fit versus someone that's gone through a great deal of challenge, struggle, you know, in their life they tend to have a little bit more of an even perspective yeah. and anyway uh and of course even is a relative thing and what i perceive to be even may not be even maybe i'm particularly soft or, or something in the other direction without realizing because i can only understand what i can understand but the idea that that we want to fundamentally alter ourselves as a species and as people seems like a incredibly incredibly high bar to prove yeah. and also like an incredibly dangerous idea because it always comes back to well, who's going to be responsible for this? Who gets to do the choosing? What's a good idea? What's not a good idea? And I guess that actually brings me kind of to a uh, something I've been encountering recently in, in discussions with friends. I feel like there's only two types of people that I that I encounter at this point: um, people with a more or less libertarian tilt to their thinking, and people without it. And when I say libertarian, I don't mean that in the in the political party sense or, or even the the belief system. Basically, where I'm like, hey. You do you, buddy. I, it's not my. It's not, what you're up to is not my concern. Versus what you're up to is my concern. And I'm, I guess I've always watched, you know, various points in history. People on this side or people on that side are more, more or less, uh, you know, I guess problematic. I guess you could say. And I don't mean that in the uh, internet sense. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, more of more of an issue. But um, it, it, the world is always full of people that want to tell you what you need to be doing, as opposed to more or less do no harm. And I guess that's one of the ones. Anytime I'm trying to tell other people what to do. I better hope I'm right. And it's bizarre to me how many people are so confident that their side or their position is the one that's not only right for them, but right enough that they can enforce it on others. And that just seems incredibly dangerous to me. And I guess that comes back to even Sam's point about, oh, uh, we want to, if under trying to spread the idea that free will doesn't exist, I'm not saying it's damaging, but it very well may be. And plenty of other things could be as well. I'm, I'm not, you know, it goes way over my head as to, you know, the implications of all of these. And I guess all of us are an evangelist for something. But uh, I, I guess it's weird that we've gotten this far as a species. And now we want to take like sharp, sharp turns. Well, we've been taking a bunch of sharp turns throughout history. Yeah, that's that's, fair. What, that's what you know. That's that's the way. You know, okay, humans love power, and one way to attain power is to say everything that you guys are doing is wrong, and I have the right thing, and I'm going to build up a giant cult of people, and I'm going to overthrow. And uh, indirectly, what that results in me is me gaining power, and that's how you get all the big revolutions in human history. Saying I'm done with the thing that the powerful are currently doing. So I'm going to overthrow. That's that's where probably all the identity politics that's happening now is people that didn't have power before are looking to gain power. 
And they're also, you know, that's where Jordan Peterson criticizes identity politics is people with the right, with the good intentions, I should say, are in seeking power, allow power to corrupt them as power always does. And so they lose track of like the, the, the devils that they're fighting by becoming the same kind of devils, the, the, the same kind of evil that they're fighting. And so that, that's just the progress of human history. But hopefully as these power greedy people keep attaining power with a, with a progressive mindset, over time things get better and better as they, continue, as they like have each iteration. Been, each iteration. Huh. A, lot of, a lot of unfairness happens, a lot of uh, hypocrisy happens. A lot of people are trampled along the way by those who mean well, but over time, like lessons are learned, or like human, like civilization accumulates lessons and in part learns the lessons of history and it gets better and better over time, even though in the short term, there's people acting not their best selves. And, you know, uh, that seems to be the progress of human history. The idea of internalizing with free will not being real. I mean, you, you're actually making me realize that that ultimately leads to a kind of um, doesn't that go in a nihilistic direction? Yeah, it's 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 both nihilistic, or if you want to be, make it a political system, then it's more like communist type of a system where like the the value of the individual is completely uh, reduced, removed, or another perspective is like the freedom of an individual is not to be valued or protected. And so from our, us, our current perspective, the systems that seem to have worked, the United States works pretty damn well, uh, despite all the different criticisms. It seems like freedom of the individual in all its forms seems to be fundamental to the success of the United States. And so we should, it's uh, however the hell you put it, is like, doesn't matter whether free will is or isn't an illusion, the belief that it's real. Protects the individual from the group, which yeah. is fundamentally, correct me if I'm wrong, that always seems like the big issue of history. Hey, there's more of me than there is of you. Deal with it. You're like, yikes. Yeah. And you want to be yourself. You want to be different. You want to have a different religion. You want to be a different skin color. You want to do this. All the bad tribal things happen when there's more of me than you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, absolutely. But And that's always the fundamental power imbalance though, right? Well, the interesting thing about the libertarian thinking, I, I guess I, I don't know, those words are really- Maybe they're, they're all charged, I know what you mean. Yeah, they're all charged. Mean, I, I may not scale up, but I, I mean more, more like on a philosophical underpinning where you're like, yeah, basically, hey, you feel free to believe I'm I'm a fool, and, and I'm, I'm, plenty of people do, I'm sure. But as long as you don't chase me down the hall and hit me in the back of the head with a textbook, what's the big deal? Yeah. 